What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with the show, this is where we talk about the news topics that happened in the scale world of RC over the past week. If you enjoyed the Scale News Update, hit the like button. Let's jump into this week's topics. First for this week, Team Garage Hack has a few new products that they launched this week. First of all is a all brass version of their 1.9 beadlock wheels. And along with all brass wheels, you can also get all brass hubs just in case you were running out of things to turn into complete brass. The design of these appears to be the same as the ones that aren't made of brass, so the only difference is the material change. But you can pick these up. I assume you could still run the aluminum hubs if you didn't quite want to add that much weight. Just, you know, just a little. Along with those releases, they also released another part that's not made of brass. This is a dual servo mount specifically made for an element enduro setup. This dual servo mount is said to be able to be dropped right into an element chassis with a couple of additional carbon fiber spacers, but sounds like it's also being made for something that maybe is more specific to an element platform that might not be the stock chassis. Either way, I have to wait for more info on that, but if you're looking to do some element modifying, then here's another option to add to your possible shopping cart. But you can check it out. I've got links to the Team Garage Hack website in the description below. You can go there, check out all of their products. ProLine has announced the 2022 ProLine by the fire date, and they moved it later in the year. Now it's going to be October 6th. Should make for a little bit tamer weather down in Southern California, but it appears that it's still going to be at Horseman's Park, the same place that it's been for the last however many years that they've been putting it on. A great location. This year they're doing a medieval theme. Last year was a carnival theme, and they incorporated that theme throughout the entire event from the you know, the schedule, the little, you know, miniature events going on within the event. So the medieval style, I have no doubt that they'll be able to apply just as well throughout. Should be a fun event, October 6th, great time of year. Check it out. I've linked to the Facebook event page in the description below. We can go check that out. I'm sure as we go, we'll see more and more information on tickets and specifics, things like that. Mark your calendars plan on making the trip, it's absolutely worth it. MST posted up some actual photos of the new DL1 van that's coming up. They posted some photos of a clear body as well as some more rendering type photos like they've done in the past, but this body is well detailed, coming with a lot of parts and not being made for body posts, at least on the platform that they're going to sell it at. They specifically said whole new none body post design specifically, but in there they also listed a bunch of other things about it. Realistic accessories for the windshield wiper that has washer jets, door handles, side mirror, front and rear bumpers, head and tail lights, car light bar, snorkel, rear tailgate, door ladder, side pedal, and specific body inner fenders. Now it is a short wheelbase at I believe under 10 inches. So not exactly going to be a wide fitting body option, going to have to be pretty specific. Their CMX platform, I think is one of the platforms that was made for that 242 millimeter wheelbase uh, body size option where they've used some of the Tamiya bodies in the past. So while this isn't going to be a van body option that's going to fit the more common 12.3 inch scale market, Still a cool look, a lot of features that they're throwing in on it for detailing. It's appealing nonetheless. I like it. I like the style of these, you know, Japanese vans. Still a little bit away from an actual release when product's going to actually land, but we'll make sure and keep an eye on it, cover that when it happens. Next, we've got a new body release from Delta Plastics, and this isn't exactly a, you know, scale like most of our stuff, but it's for the Arma Infraction, and it's a Ford Mercury body old school, like dock from cars looking lead sled, a cool or kind of an oddball choice for them to produce. But I like the thought, you know, way outside the box from the, you know, the trucks or the Porsches or the Corvette bodies that are otherwise available for that infraction platform. Definitely out there. Now the Delta plastics, they never do a very good job displaying their own products, photos or poor and bad lighting, not necessarily even painted that well. I've never owned one of their bodies. I wonder if the quality of the body is far above the quality of their marketing or if everything just kind of goes hand in hand. If you've ever owned a body from Delta Plastics, you'll have to let me know. I'm 
truly interested. And I don't know that I necessarily want the Ford Mercury body for my infraction. Otherwise, maybe I'd pull that trigger. But either way, an oddball new release out there. Kind of cool. If you've got one of those big Armas and you want to you know, just roll the dice at something way off the wall, I can't think of anything more appropriate than this. This week, I want to thank Holmes Hobbies for sponsoring the Scale News update for the month of December. The new Holmes Hobbies SHV650 is in stock now. This thing is a direct power servo, runs on 2 to 4S direct power. So it pulls the power right from your battery rather than through the BEC of your ESC. Makes things a little bit more efficient. All machined steel gears, brushless motor. This servo will make over a thousand ounce inches of power if you're running 4S and almost 900 ounce inches of power if you're running 3S. So an absolute monster as far as power goes. Definitely worth taking a look at. And it's linked in the description below. Again, thanks to Holmes Hobbies for sponsoring the Scale News Update for the month of December. Number of weeks back, we saw some info that Jegs was going to be releasing their own RC monster truck. And over the last week, we saw that release finally pop up. On the Jegs website, you can now go find the Hooligan monster truck. And like a lot of you keen-eyed people saw in the promo video, this does appear to be a CEN produced truck. It's basically the exact same truck. It maybe even has less details on it, different livery, but most of the rest of it seems to be the exact same. And like you may expect, Jegs is selling it for around $400, while you can get the actual CEN version for about $300. It's like $330, but right now there is a $20 off coupon code for that, so you can get it for like $309. I've linked below to where you can find the Jegs hooligan version. Maybe you have a gift card to Jags or something like that. Or I also linked to the CEN one along with where the discount code is so that you could get yourself the same truck, maybe a little bit better looking with some more stuff for almost $100 less. I guess I can understand why Jags is trying to do this. They've been selling some RC stuff for quite a while, mainly Traxxas and likely just worked out something with CEN to have this produced for them. And they think that they can maybe just capitalize with a little bit higher margins since maybe people buying through them don't have the same ability to, you know, shop around for RC items. But nonetheless, Maybe you'll like something about it much more than the other version and you're okay with the price difference. If so, there you go. Maybe it's just the convenience factor alone. Then if you happen to be a Jeep Grand Cherokee ZJ fan, Loops has come out with a hard body option for you. If I was gonna have to rank all of the Grand Cherokee body styles, I'm not 100% sure where I'd put the ZJ in that lineup. I do enjoy seeing when these less common or desirable body options become available, especially in the hard body options. Now, these are a good amount of work to get you know, onto a vehicle. I don't believe that these come with Lexan windows. I think maybe you have to make that stuff yourself. You have to come up with a way to mount it, the whole deal. So it's not exactly like the ease of a Lexan body. And also these aren't inexpensive. Loops is from somewhere over in Europe. I think that there's a saying about ZJs and if you have to ask, you can't afford it. But I don't remember exactly where that came from. But having more unique body options on the market is never a bad thing. And Loops has a lot of unique ones. If you've never gone and checked through their website, definitely go do it. Even if you're not a ZJ fan, lots of other body options that are worth checking out. So I've linked them in the description below as well. Go check it out. Maybe they've got that one body option that you've never seen somewhere else and just have to have. Then this week, I saw that there was an Axial SCX24 JLU V2 released, which shocked me as it was the only one and I didn't see anything posted about it. Did some research on it because I couldn't see anything new about this V2 release as it was labeled in the part number. However, it appears that the V2 is only to designate that they've made some electronics changes to it that appear to be very simple, very minor, something that probably could have almost just been a normal running change. But since they did it with the new JLU, I assume that we're going to see this V2 designation kind of work its way through the whole line of these vehicles and the older ones 
kind of go away, but you'll start seeing this new or pre-order option for the V2s pop up throughout. Probably not something to get too excited about. Same SCX24 underneath, just with a little bit of a tweaked electronics likely to alleviate supply chain issues. Last week on Livestream Takeover, Matt and I were discussing our Christmas list for 2021, and we both put together a number of items in a number of different categories, under $100, under $200, as well as a bunch of vehicles, also threw some tools in there. Definitely just some items that are worth looking at, some specifically because they're really reduced in price. Last week, we discussed the price of the Rift kit being dropped significantly. So if you're looking for one of those, definitely a good time to scoop one up. Same went for the Element Gatekeeper, both the kit and the RTR price chopped quite a bit for the holiday season. Axial SCX-10 3 straight axle kits dropped to $99 from the original $180 pretty good bargain to be had with those. And there's a number of other products listed in that. I'll link to that entire list that I put together in the description below. Go check those out. Lots of good items. And I'll try and update that as things go in case there's any really good sales or things that pop up that probably should swoop up before the holidays are over. But that's going to do it for this week's news topics. For this week's question though, on the topic of the Christmas listing, we just talked about some RC related items, but I want to hear from you. If you guys have ideas for Christmas gifts for people that aren't in RC, but maybe kind of are in a similar mindset, you know, like to tinker or like to build things. What do you guys have for ideas? Maybe I'm trying to have you do some legwork for me just to try and come up with some interesting gift ideas that maybe I didn't think about. Drop them in the comments below. Maybe we'll find some good ones and talk about them next week. But as always, I appreciate you guys watching the Scale News Update. Thanks again for joining me on your Tuesdays. Hit the like button if you enjoy these. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. As always, thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.